Good morning. My name is Rafael Espinal. I'm the chair of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. I'm joined today by my colleagues on the committee. We have Justin Brandon from Brooklyn. We have Margaret Chin from Manhattan, Peter Koo from Queens, Karen Coswitz from Queens, and Keith Powers from Manhattan. Today, the committee will be voting on intro bill number 1281A, which would prohibit retail establishments from refusing to accept payment in cash. As a co-sponsor of this bill, I'm happy that we can draw attention to some of the unintended consequences of new cashless technologies and how they impact marginalized populations. Cashless transactions can be beneficial for businesses. Eliminating cash from the premises removes the incentive for robbery and store owners don't have to worry about having change for customer transaction or making deposits at day's end. Businesses also report that card transactions happen faster. That means less wait times for customers who appreciate speed and efficiency. However, there are also unattended negative consequences that flow on from a policy that, that relies exclusively on cashless payments. In a modern financial hub like New York City, it might be easy to assume that everyone has easy access to the banking facilities and technology that allows cashless transactions. Unfortunately, however, this is not the case. Across the city, there are large populations who are disconnected from formal banking institutions. In 2013, close to 12% of the city's population were completely unbanked. Additionally, more than 25% of the population were underbanked meaning that they relied on services such as payday loans or check cashing facilities rather than banks. These households may have a savings or a checking account, but in most cases, the fees or overdraft fines make them too cost prohibitive to use regularly. The share of unbanked and underbanked households is also closely linked to poverty rates. According to the 2015 report, the boroughs with the highest percentages of unbanked and underbanked households were the Bronx and Brooklyn. Both of these boroughs had rates way above the national, state, and city rates, and both also have high levels of poverty. In terms of neighborhoods in Brownsville, which falls partly in my district, 28% of households had no bank account in 2015. They also had a poverty rate of 33%. In addition to creating barriers for poorer communities, establishments that solely limit transactions to cashless purchases may also impact immigrant communities and survivors of domestic violence. Both populations face specific challenges when opening bank accounts, whether that be a lack of documents or identifying information, language barriers, or safety fears. Cashless technology clearly brings important benefits to businesses and to the customers who are able to make use of it. And while it can seem counterintuitive to challenge innovation, that, that streamlined process and, and make business more efficient, it is important to ensure that these changes do not cause unintended harm. When attitudes towards cash money equated with being dirty, antiquated, or unsophisticated, we risk stigmatizing the communities who rely on it. We want to make sure that the people who have no other form of legal tender can fully make use of it. If not, we risk segregating customers and perpetuating the divide between the haves and have-nots. I therefore encourage my colleagues to join me in voting in the affirmative for this bill. I will now call the vote. Mr. Clark, can you please call the roll? William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Com Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. Introduction 1281A, Chair Espinal. Aye, vote aye. Chin. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Powers. Aye. My vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention. Item has been adopted by the committee. All right, with that said, this meeting has adjourned with enough time for Keith Powers to get to where he needs to go. That's right. <laughs>